To discuss the foreign investments in Latin America here in the studio, we have Cecilia Nahon, a former Argentinian ambassador to the United States. From Shanghai, Charles Tang is the chairman of the Brazil-China Chamber of Commerce. Also with us, Cynthia Arnson is the director of the Latin America program at the Wilson Center. And from Hong Kong, Victor Gao is an international relations expert. Welcome to all of you. Victor, let me start with you and let's Thank look you. at Chinese investment uh, in Latin America. Let's put some figures on this. Uh, in 1990, it was almost nothing, negligible. Uh, it got up to 270 billion in 2012, and it's grown even more since then. What is the attraction for Chinese investors? Why do they find Latin America, South America particularly, so attractive? Uh, generally speaking, China is a latecomer as far as Latin America is concerned. However, over the past several years, especially since 2000, uh, the Chinese investments and trade and the economic relations with Latin America as a whole and with many very important Latin American countries have increased by leaps and bounds. This is mainly because China and all the Latin American countries are emerging economies. There is a high level of complementarity to each other and there is indeed a huge need for both sides to engage with each other for mutual benefit. China, relatively speaking, has achieved a much higher level of industrialization and China can share many expertise, financial resources, and uh, manufacturing capacities with many Latin American countries. There is a need in many Latin American countries to achieve a high level of industrialization and urbanization and building up the connectivity, infrastructure, power, for example. And in many of these areas, China probably is one of the few countries in the world which can really engage very comprehensively with Latin America as a whole and with the larger economies in Latin America in particular. So the potential is there and we are very excited about the future development and the mega trend of closer economic relations between China and Latin America. Cynthia, of course the United States remains a major trade partner to the countries of Latin America but there was a survey that was published recently done by Pew Research which showed that almost three quarters of the people surveyed uh, have no confidence in the United States and particularly in President Trump and you add to that of course Trump's America first policies um, has that given China a chance to supplant basically uh, the United States role in Latin America? Well, I think it's certainly given um, the Chinese government an opportunity to step in politically in a way that satisfies this um, rejection of, um, of the Trump administration's policies, especially the kind of campaign rhetoric that was heard, the anti-immigrant uh, um, rhetoric and, and actions, the emphasis on building the wall between the United States and Mexico, all of those things I think that were focused on Mexico had a much broader resonance um, in Latin America. At the same time, I think a number of Latin American countries who have come to Washington and have met one-on-one -on -one with President Trump have tried to advance the interests of their own, of their own countries. And I think it's important, though, to say from the get-go that for certain countries, principally those that are major exporters of commodities, right. Chile, Peru, Brazil, um, uh, Argentina to a lesser extent, I mean, China is the number two trading partner, but China had supplanted the United States as the principal trading partner um, since the, uh, the early or, or mid-2000s, and I think that it was this um, huge growth levels in China that created an enormous demand for primary commodities for energy, as well as, you know, the desire of these countries to, to export. There's a lot of criticism, and I think a, a, a more uh, reflective view now about um, the kind of trade relationship and economic relationship that Latin American countries have with China and want to have with China, a lot of criticism about the reprimarization um, of Latin American economies in the sense that China was doing the same thing that other um, colonial powers, you know, had done in the past. Nonetheless, this is an enormous growth opportunity. Um, some countries were able to save enormous amounts of, of um, foreign exchange you know, from the, the years of the, of, the, of the commodity boom. But there's no doubt that countries are looking to China for investment, for mm -hmm. financial capital, for um, the trading opportunities that exist, but are trying to get beyond right. simply the export of primary commodities. Right. Ambassador, to what extent uh, have the Trump policies of uh, withdrawing from the TPP, the Trans-Pacific Partnership, also threatening to pull out of NAFTA, to what extent um, has that pushed Latin Americans to find other trading partners? 
Well, I, I believe that at this point, the contrast between the China policy and the U.S. policy regarding Latin America couldn't be more different. Uh, it's not only that the U.S. is not paying so much attention to the region, as some people say, but I believe that, in fact, it has been a policy that recently with the Trump administration, it's being very damaging to the region, not only because of the rhetoric of denigration and of attacks, but also, in fact, I think that some references uh, in terms of the use of military force in the region and the type of uh, trade uh, policies that the Trump administration is following are, are really mostly damaging to the region. On the contrary, we have China, which has expressed that Latin America is a land full of vitality and hope, mm. and that is really willing to engage uh, in a positive way uh, with the region and is really investing and putting financial resources and political uh, commitment to the region. That said, I agree that this is not a new phenomenon, that this has been taking place for the last 15 years, and that in fact there is a very significant uh, need to think critically about the relation between China and Latin America as much as I promote uh, an intelligent review of the relation between the US and Latin America. In particular, uh, it seems to me there's an opportunity la now in face of this historic uh, need and interest to make a qualitative leap in the relation between China and Latin America in terms of avoiding, as Cynthia was saying, a, a, very, uh, a relation based on primary production and moving forward, a relation that can really help Latin America industrialize right. and develop its infrastructure. I want to get back to that in a moment, but I want to bring Charles in. Charles, what is you, your view of China's burgeoning relationship with uh, the countries of Latin America? For instance, you know, China is already a major trading partner for Brazil, Peru, and Chile. What are the kinds of opportunities that these, uh, do these countries present to a country like China? Well, in terms of Brazil and Peru, uh, they are very important supplies of the strategic resources that China needs for its sustained growth. Uh, also, as a breadbasket to the world, uh, China is very important for the... F uh, uh, Brazil is very important for the food security of the Chinese people. And I agree with my colleague that uh, one of the uh, major aspects that attract Latin America to China. Uh, I wrote an article a few years ago for the World Policy Institute in New York where I alluded to the fact that America's backyard is growing a Chinese garden. And that's because that China has a win-win policy and has innovated in foreign relations and international relations and the building of alliances. Since the beginning of history, uh, stronger nations defeated and controlled the weaker nations. China, basically, China does not send its marines. It sends its businessmen to trade and to invest. And the uh, footprint of China in these countries are basically development and prosperity. Uh, whereas, you know, some, what a colleague mentioned about uh, people thinking about new colonial power. Uh, I, I was asked that in an interview to, with BBC World TV about Africa, and I said that uh, China transformed Africa from a continent, a lost continent for many decades, with its wealth stripped by its former colonial masters, into a continent of hope, with its massive investments in infrastructure. And that is what Brazil, Latin America, the Caribbean needs infrastructure, capital for development. And China is attracting alliances rather than forcing alliances upon them. Uh, and that is very attractive because the Chinese philosophy is basically we do business, we make money, right. but we also make you rich. Cynthia, and help you develop. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm wondering if you could address that. The Chinese relationship with the developing countries of the world is very different, isn't it, from the ones that colonial powers had with uh, their client states? Absolutely, yeah. and I hope that it wasn't interpreted as mm -hmm. my saying that, that China had a neocolonial policy. Yeah. I think that the, the reference was really more to the export of primary commodities, which is a right. role 
in the economies of Latin America that they have always had and are trying to move beyond and use those resources precisely to invest right. in industrial capacity and, and infrastructure. And China is extremely well placed uh, because of its enormous wealth and capital to provide um, those kinds of resources um, that, would, that, that Latin American countries are, are seeking. This is a region that has very poor infrastructure that knows that there's an enormous deficit that is looking to build roads and, and, and power generation capacity um, uh, to connect you know, themselves within countries and also between countries. And, and, uh, and China has been an important source. You know, that said, China has some interests, I think, that are beyond economic. I think some of them are, are geostrategic. Right. Um, the opportunity to be present in an area that the United States has traditionally, for hundreds of years, seen as a sphere of influence um, is not lost um, on, on the political leaders um, in China, and it's not lost on the leaders of Latin American countries. And, and, and so I think that... Um, there is a mutual interest in moving away and, and being more independent you know, of the United States, and, and China very much provides that opportunity. Okay, certainly the world is changing. I want to get Victor's view on the nature of the relationship between China and the countries of Latin America, but first I'm going to have to take a break, Victor. I'll come back to you. There's plenty more to discuss. We're going to take a quick break and return to talk about China in Latin America. Stay with us.